Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Urcioli here, your digital host on the Forge Audio Network. We have a lot to get to today. Uh, we'll talk about Forge's win over Edmonton. We'll hear from some of the players. Um, interview with Andy Petrillo coming up, the host that won soccer and also the CBC. And we'll give you a, a quick little preview of Forge's match against Valor FC this weekend. And then we'll delve into a deeper preview uh very soon but first uh that three nothing win over fc edmonton at uh, tim hortons field in hamilton forge's most complete most dominant effort of the season um against a team in edmonton who yes is young and has some of their challenges but is a very difficult team to score goals against and forge had a breakout uh, performance speaking of breakout performance taron campbell had his um he scored a brace he also set up the other goal for forge and the man who was set up by campbell for forge's second goal tristan borges he talked about how his club settled into their game after an 0-1 and one start to the season yeah i think that's a solid performance all around right defensively offensively uh we played well we knew how important the game was just to kind of kick start the season it's been a little bit slow but um i think it was a well uh, well uh, well played game from all of us i think the defenders did well we got a clean sheet we got some goals you know getting the striker obviously is uh getting him some goals to get, uh, have the confidence for the season is important so i think it was a good game all around now, coming into the year, Forge talked a lot uh, about their uh, focus on depth and versatility in their players. I'm just, I'm not that sure uh, that they expected their versatility and depth to be tested this much this early in the season. But guys have bought in, uh, bought into the team culture that's been cultivated by Coach Bobby Smirniotis and his staff. Um, Abu Bakar Sissoko. Great example, typical midfielder, but he was called upon to, to play on the back line, and he's just happy to contribute. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, you know, what the, the way we play here, and the way the coaches and my teammates give me some advice to adapt myself in my new position, help me to be a better player, so, you know, it's always good to play, and uh, play good football, and learning every day, so I'm here to learn, and uh, every day I improve myself, and then uh, I'm happy. And we are joined by Andy Petrillo. Uh, we host, analyst um, for One Soccer, CBC. You can see her all over the place. Uh, thanks so much, Andy, for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. You know, I, I should say right off the bat that as a, a five foot six male who stopped growing in grade seven, I, I instinctively want to dislike your husband. I, I don't know him. <laughs> He just seems a little too tall for my liking is all. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I there, there are other things that make me dislike him too. Um, <laughs> mostly his hair as well. He's very lucky to have a yeah, thick head of hair with an auburn tinge to it, which is what I've always wanted in my life. So you can, you can hate him for the height. I hate him for that. No, I'm kidding. We love him. But yeah, six foot five, um, prototypical goalkeeper, right? Yes. Um, just as kooky as as they come as well. So Right. Yeah. And I didn't even think about the full head of hair. That's two two oh. strikes <laughs> against him now. I <laughs> we might have to end this. I can't I don't know if I can keep it together. I love that. That's too I, I didn't even do that on purpose. I was thinking okay. I was thinking more about me and then I'm like, oh Anthony, whoops. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it's these these Italian jeans. I can't I can't yeah, shake them. Too funny. Um you know, actually, that brings up an inter interesting point because, you know, Forge and Toronto FC, your husband, by the way, former Toronto FC goalkeeper, now uh, keeper coach mm -hmm. for Toronto FC. There's a big matchup coming up at Tim Hortons Field in June mm -hmm. between Forge and TFC. I know you have a soft spot for the Canadian Premier League. But also your husband. It's a yeah. bit of a con conflicting things here. Yeah, I'm going to sit on the fence on that one. Um, but listen, I love these types of matchups. I think the CPL MLS matchups in the Canadian Championship have been thrilling, to say the least. Uh, obviously, in that first year with what Cavalry did and then what Pacific was able to do, both of them against Vancouver. And I mean, Forge going the distance you know, with CF Montreal, like everyone having to take a kick, even Tristan Henry having to get on in there and the goalkeepers. So it's never been short of drama. I'm very excited to see what this will hold. I'm also curious um, just to know as well, more so for Toronto FC, right, if it'll be a full lineup. Because if I'm not mistaken, I do think that's going to be a FIFA window. And mm. obviously with Canada qualifying for the World Cup, you know John Herdman's going to want to call 
everybody in as much as possible to get them any kind of playing time, right? So I'm also right. curious to see what kind of lineup um, that'll be, but it doesn't matter, right? It's still going to be a great Forge TFC matchup on June 4th. So I'm just rooting for a great game. Yes, everyone to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I know, I got you. Um, <laughs> You know, as someone, by the way, I, like, I remember seeing you, you know, I was at the first ever Forge game and, and I remember actually seeing you there. So, I mean, you, you've seen it from the ground up. I think we we expected early on for Forge to kind of be the, the class of the league, at least for the first few seasons. And they don't they don't seem to be showing any signs of uh, letting up heading into this fourth year now, the Canadian Premier League. Mm -hmm. No, this is a strong team. Um, and, and to your point, we always knew that they would be strong, much like Cavalry, because of the grassroots level they had. Cavalry had the foothills and obviously Sigma here with, with Forge. It was absolutely no surprise either to see these two teams be the class of the league in the beginning, but also continue to be. Bobby Smirnione is being around for as long as he has, right? So it, no surprise to see them do that. And Bobby is so, Bobby's so smart. I mean, a lot of the coaches I've spoken to are so great, but I, I still remember that first year in 2019 and heading into that final, and it was that second leg against Cavalry. And just having a chance to talk to him and the way he dissected the game, the way he talked about tactics, um, the way he even talked about the opposition and what players on his team needed to go where. I remember turning, you know, to my one soccer crew after that, like I turned to Ollie, we had Jeff Paulus um, as well, who was a guest um, host with us, former coach of FC Edmonton. And we just went, uh oh. Like we just knew cavalry was in trouble. We just knew the way Bobby was talking. It was like he had bullets in the chamber that he hadn't used throughout the season. And that's why, and I keep asking the guys, like I'll poke and prod a little bit here by saying, Hey, Forge is not at the top of the table here. You're for like, are you concerned? Right. And of course they say no, because mm -hmm. this is kind of Forge's MO as well. Right. Like this is Bobby once again, observing, not that of course you don't want to come out of the gates flying and pick up wins all the time, but he's also not panicking, right? Because he's looking at the other teams. He's figuring them out. He looks at his team. He knows what he has. Obviously, they're coming off a nice, you know, uh, win there against Edmonton. And they'll have their hands full. I do think they're going to have their hands full against Valor, who's next, just because Valor's coming off, you know, a big 6-1 win over Ottawa. And right. sometimes that afterglow can last, you know, a, a while. And that confidence is there. But uh, no, I mean, Forge has been strong from the beginning and to have the cerebral mind of, you know, Bobby Smyrniotis as well and the way he watches you. I mean, he's like, he, honestly, he's a lion who stalks his prey <laughs> and uh, he can figure out the team very quickly and then have the right pieces in place um, on his own team to go out and challenge them. Yeah. And, and you've, you've been out to a lot of the different CPL communities. Um, I, I'm I, I barely leave my home, so I'm definitely not leaving Hamilton. But when, when you get out to these different markets, um, do you feel the same energy from the different fan bases that, that we have here in Hamilton? Oh, yeah. I, I have to say the CPL fan base has been incredible. That was my first experience, to your point, the very first game ever CPL being in Hamilton. Um, but I thought it was so wonderful at the time known as York 9, right? But like even the York 9 fans, the way they came out, mm -hmm. there's the green smoke and everything. And, I, and the buses were unloading them. And I thought, OK, here we go. And then obviously I've had the privilege of watching a game in Halifax too. And just because of the size, like that's another thing, right? Like given the size of certain venues right now right. in the CPL, a smaller stadium just bodes well. So that, I mean, it's loud in Halifax. They absolutely love the team. Again, small little kind of city center. So they gather and they make their way over uh, and they mm -hmm. march. Um, Edmonton, the fans were still there, even though I was there in November, which was close to the end of the season and they were clearly out <laughs> yeah. of the playoffs the fans still showed up, right? Like they were still there. So it's been a great vibe all around. And then Cavalry, of course, you know, I'm having the, the privilege of being at Atco Field there and watching that fan base. Everyone loves their teams. Um, and I think that's where the CPLs really kind of hit on those markets. And I'm so excited to see the new teams, you know, launching as well. The other one mm -hmm. out in BC, obviously very excited, you know, for that one in Saskatchewan, because I think when you kind of hit these markets, you can really grow the league as well. And the fans are into it. Yes. And it, it's interesting. You, you talked about, it, I, I struggle with this sometimes too, because you want to reward the hardcore CPL fans who have been there from the start. And you don't want to talk down to them, but you know, every time you go on the air, you could have a new viewer, maybe someone who's new to soccer and they just want to kind of be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Can it be difficult to kind of bridge that? Cause it, you can easily, 
um, mm -hmm. let's say offend the hardcore soccer fans if you do talk down to them, but you don't want to alienate the new fans too. W where do you kind of strike that balance? Yeah, it's, it's tough and it's not something you can really plan. Sometimes, right. you know, to your point, there could be a storyline and to, yeah, what you just said, like the diehard fan knows that storyline. They know the implications of that storyline. And they're probably sitting there going, Andy, like, why are you explaining that again? Or why do you feel this is necessary? Because to your point, we do have a new audience, whether it's in Canada or whether it's now, as you know, we've signed new deals as One Soccer, mm -hmm. where the CPL is now airing in Mexico and it's now airing in the Caribbean. So now you mm -hmm. have this completely different audience who's tuning in going, what is this? Right. So now you feel the need to kind of a little go back a little bit in history and Bobby and Sigma. Right. And then you kind of do the grassroots. And then Tristan Borges was the great player in year one and then left and then came back. Like You do have right. to sometimes do a little bit of storytelling and a little bit of explaining. And, um, you know, just year one, there was the, you know, the spring champion and the summer champion. And then there was the title. And now it's change. And this with the under 21 minutes. So you do some explaining, you do some storytelling, while at the same time trying to get in some hardcore analysis as well. But, you know, I do appreciate you even giving me this platform right now to any fans who are watching that that is the predicament. If it's a predicament, sometimes that has a negative connotation. That is the honor we have as people on air is knowing that the CPL is growing, knowing that we want to speak to the ones who have been there since day one, but at the same time, we are in different markets. We're in, we're in the Caribbean now. We're in Mexico now. Right. And we're also getting new Canadian fans as well. So we want to make sure we uh, entice them, intrigue them, and keep them on board. Too. All right. Love, love talking to Andy. Uh, next up for Forge, an away match in Winnipeg against Valor FC. Valor, by the way, coming off a six-goal effort against Ottawa. And this weekend's matchup is going to be their home opener. So they're feeling pretty good. And uh, Forge will have to play as well, maybe even better than they did against Edmonton last weekend. All right, plenty more Forge FC coverage uh, coming up, up and down the Forge audio network. So keep it locked as we continue to focus on Forge. Freedom! 